Well, hello again. Thank you for joining us uh, for this uh, uh, edition of Do You Really Want to Know? And like we say every week, it's my, uh, myself and one of our pastors, and this week is our youth pastor, Pastor Zach. How are you? Good. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Yeah, it's morning for us. And, it is morning and, for yeah, us, yeah. Yeah, bright and early. It is, yeah. Uh, well, cloudy and early, but still, <laughs> it counts. It's, it's a good morning. And uh, each week, like like we do, we get together and, you know, we dive a little bit deeper into the previous Sunday's message. Right. So that people can get out and, you know, and uh, ask questions. You know, we encourage those to come to us. And right. That kind of stuff, so. If there's any lingering question from the sermon yesterday that you want to know more about, then please reach out to us right. so yeah. we can address that. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So why don't you go ahead and kind of break down a little bit of yesterday, recap yesterday's sermon. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, you know... In, in the life of who we are, Village Meadows right here, and it, and it really applies to, to people in general, you know, we should always be moving forward in life, right. right? You can't sit still. And of course, we have a lot of exciting things happening on campus. Right. New building and, and, and new people and all right. kinds of stuff. It's not just the building. So I thought of this passage as I was praying, you know, try to see what God wants us to go a few weeks out. And this, you know, we came out of Numbers 14 and, and the encouragement, the, the, the request of the title this week, was uh, please don't go without God. Right. And, you know, we were using the analogy, if you remember in Numbers 13, uh, the previous chapter from where we actually looked, you know, the spies went in the land of Canaan. Right. Uh, getting close to the promised land, right? Right. And then in 14 is the fallout of their report. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we we got to where we were looking and we saw, of course, I'm sure you remember, there were 12 spies. Right. Uh, only two said we can do this. Correct. You know, the other 10 were negative Nellies. Well, they weren't yeah. even close to, they weren't even on the fence. They just were like, not a chance in the world. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And th so, you know, for whatever I'm, we, we talk about, and we'll get into a little bit more, you know, there was there was fear, there was you know, intimidations, you know, all these different things. And and uh, also maybe I, I think on some level there was comfort. They liked absolutely. where they were, you yeah. know, they, were, they, they didn't want the unknown. It's a, it's a big step uh, to take, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the promised land sounds great, but right. it can it can, that can be an intimidating absolutely. thing because there's change involved in that right. and nobody likes change. New, um, new settings, new circumstances, right, new yeah. everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we just we move through like we usually do, verse by verse in a chapter, and uh, we broke it down into six points uh, this past week. Uh, and you, with the, in the first four verses, we we pointed out the fact that sometimes uh, we all whine. Yeah. And. Yeah, we, we we're, we're good at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, not, not just who we are in our particular uh, denominational bent, but just people in general. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. It just. That comes from the uncertainty and fear and all that stuff too. Is it's it manifests itself as like I'm just going to complain about this. Right. Yeah. And sometimes it just feels good. <laughs> it does. It does. I mean, it, maybe it's uh, the wrong kind of therapy, but it Absolutely. feels like therapy. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we get you know caught up in you know in how things are and they're comfortable, but also the stress of you know the you know and it's not always negative stress, but stress itself. Right. And you just and we get to where we're whining, and that's what we saw in the children of Israel right. here. Because, you know, they were saying, you know, basically we would have been better off if we just stayed where we were. Right. Let's, and then remember they got as bad in verse 4, they got so bad they even said, let's just get a new leader. We're done with yeah, Moses and let's go back. <laughs> right. Oh, how crazy is that? Yeah, you know. It's pretty insane if you think of the, especially the whole like brevity of this, of this journey. It's pretty weird to be yeah. like, let's just head back now. Right, exactly. Of course, and I, we have one advantage, though. We're here looking back. Absolutely. But they were in the thick of it. Absolutely. And I'm not saying they're right. But that's when you start whining the most. It's when right. you're right in the middle of it. And you, you can understand look why, picture. looking back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have, we do have that hindsight to be like, right. oh, why are you guys thinking? But at the time, I'm sure a lot of them thought that this was a really good idea. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, and, and then, you know, we but we reminded ourselves of this, that, you know, if you follow God in the, in the next, uh, what, six verses, uh, that he will always win. Absolutely. And, you know, following his ways, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but, but that's the win. Absolutely. Right? Because if we rely on who we are right. or what we want or our comfort or what we think is best, obviously, we're going to fall flat on our face. But if, if you follow God, it's always a win. And that is a great reminder to be like that God wins. Yeah. That's a great reminder. In the midst yeah. of whatever change is happening, right. just remember God wins. And, you know, that kind of applies to today. Right. And, and, and you think about it. You know, we think, I think each generation is guilty of this. And we've talked about it before. You know, we all think we've got it the toughest. Right. You know, no one else has ever had it as tough as we do. Right. 
But, you know, in, in each situation where you are, that's the toughest thing there is, right. and that's what you know. So what they were going through, uh, you, know, you know, on this journey to the promised land was the toughest thing they knew. Right. Well, you know, fast forward to today where we are as a, as a church, as, 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 you know, individuals in our families, but also as a society right. with everything crazy going on in the right. world. You know, it seems like the toughest ever. Right. But it's what a great reminder for the follower and believer in Jesus Christ. He wins. Absolutely. And we need that. Absolutely. That's a great reminder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And some days more than others, but, but it's a constant reminder. So then we moved on in, in the next couple of verses to remind ourselves that from what we see there in Scripture, you know, the, the example that if you don't follow God's ways, right. he'll whip us. Absolutely. And, you know, he certainly did these folks <laughs> in Numbers 14. And, and there's all kinds of examples el elsewhere in Scripture, too, where that happens. But who in life hasn't lived that, right? Right. And sometimes God uses a very gentle reminder. Yeah. And sometimes it's a little bit more uh, harsh. Sure. And Because sometimes I need a little bit tougher reminder. Yeah, absolutely. But that gentle one I've, I may have ignored or right. I'm not quite sunk in. Sure. So sure. this was a, a one for them where he's really just firm on that. Right. Yeah. yeah now, you know, we know, of course, you know, I, I use the example in my own life. I, I uh, you know, was running from my call when I was 18, and, and where I knew God wanted me to go, mm -hmm. and I, I went into the business world and ended up staying there 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I, don't get me wrong, there were some good times during that, but at the same time, it, it kept me away from where I was supposed to be. Absolutely. And, and what did he tell the children of Israel? Man, this is scary, right? Because of this, right. only two of you is going to go into the promised right. land. Everybody else, you won't live to it. You, so that was where the 40 years in the wilderness right. started. And you know that's I mean that's a, that's a whipping. There's that, no other way to say yeah, it. Yeah, that's a that's know? a big timeout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your timeout not 15 minutes but 40 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah a big big difference. So then we we moved on and, and we reminded ourselves that we should always be in tune. I mean we kind of talked about it earlier with winning, but in verses 13 through 19, how important it is to be aware of and be on base with God's ways. Oh, absolutely. And we get our own ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Or Twitter gives us our own ideas. Well, or you know, social media. And it, yeah. and it doesn't matter what it is. As long as if it's not God, then it's wrong. Right. And so his ways are, are greater and higher. Right. Our ways are are pretty bad. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty, pretty poor. They are, aren't yeah. they? And, and then especially then when you get a whole group of people together, uh, it gets worse. Right. Because we feed off of each other, usually towards the negative side. Right. And those fears, right. that the uncertainty, that things that we're upset about, we feed into that instead of just sub submitting. Right. And you're like, I'm following his ways. And and that's why it's so important when we are in those groups, like in, in a faith family, in, in small groups and corporate worship and all that, to remind ourselves. Right. You know, constantly to be to be that you know, iron sharpens iron, as Absolutely. scripture says, where we're reminding one another, hey, wait, it's about God's ways, not Absolutely. ours. Right. And that's part of like discipleship, right? Right. Is the fact that we're there to encourage each other. Yeah. And to keep each other accountable. Absolutely. Not just to be like, okay, this is a great gripe session. Right. No, it's encourage each other, lift each other up, yeah. and then to keep each other accountable so we yeah. don't get into that falling short again. Yeah. And and if we don't do that, if we don't follow his ways, this is where we're really getting into the thick of this because you know the whole time we're you know, we were trying to encourage folks, please don't do this. Don't right. go without God. Right. Especially when you're on the on the edge of the promised land. Correct. And in the analogy to us here as a church, God's doing so many things on campus and in our online family too. And, and we're seeing so much positive momentum and life change. Right. You know, we certainly want to continue to see that. But if you don't follow those words, if you're not faithful to them, in, in the next the next part we talked about is how dangerous it can be and how it does exist sometimes that we enter the wilderness. Oh, absolutely. And I think we could sit it for the next few hours and just discuss the times you've been wandering in the wilderness and the times I've been wandering in the wilderness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it happens. Yeah. And I, I'm not proud of those times, but it just shows how much just how faithful God is that he helps bring us out of that wilderness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it's, it, they had been in Egypt right in bondage and in slavery and and all this and then they're, they're on this journey and they're, i mean they saw the red sea part not right, too long ago right. right and then they get here and they're on the edge of what god had been promising them and his people for generations right and they've seen all these miracles that you know the, you know the story right? And, right and everyone i'm sure does and refresher you know in in egypt with pharaoh and all the plagues and all these different things and they they get here and then they just don't follow that last step or what seemed to be the last step, right? And then they enter this wilderness, right? And you know, of course, 
you know, that there was there was punishment to it, but there was also growth to it. Right. Uh, and we'll, you know, you know, we, we talked about that a little bit. How even though it's not something we want to go through, you know, like you know, I mentioned that 15 years me in, in trucking, and, and you've talked about things. Right. That you mean no, we wish we didn't have not done that. Right. But at the same time, God used it to grow us. Absolutely, it's not that just because you're wandering the wilderness doesn't mean that God's not using you, showing you, growing you, right. teaching you, and you're you're becoming the, the mature Christian you are during that time in the wilderness. Right. And it, Sometimes it thinks that we have to go through that, but yeah. God is still faithful through that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because isn't it, isn't it great to know, you know, Scripture says, right, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's always a purpose. Absolutely. There's always a plan. Nothing catches God off guard. And that's kind of, the I think, was the last reminder when we got into the last six verses in 39 through 45. And, you know, Moses had basically been, you know, saying to the children of Israel, and we get it from Scripture, basically asking them this question, right, why won't you listen? Right. I mean, God's proven time and time again who He is. Right. Why won't we listen? I mean, the, this is a group of people who had legitimately seen miracles firsthand. Yeah. And they still were unsure and unwilling to take that one big leap of faith at this point. Right. Which isn't just mind-blowing to me, but I'd be the same way. Sure. And I would, too. Yeah. But it's kind of like we, t we touched on earlier. I mean, we have, the, we have the benefit of looking backwards. Absolutely. And we, we can see all the miracles and all these where well, they're living in it in real time. Right. And so on one level, I get it. Right. And what, what, how's it, some people say that, that explains it, but doesn't excuse it. Uh, that's true. Yeah. You know, so we've all done that. Absolutely. You think that Moses just wants to start shaking them and be like, why won't you guys listen? Yeah. Just listen. Yeah, like, exactly. You've seen what he's done. You've seen the plan. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. I mean, could you not get it through your thick skull? Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, the plague, I mean, everything that we've right. seen, man, I want all this stuff. And, and anyway, uh, you know, so. You know, the encouragement really basically was that for for you know the reminder from them because it's also what the wisest thing you can do is learn from someone else's mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we've got the example. So we need to learn from that. Exactly. Not not to be hard headed and yeah. lack faith. Right. Yeah. Now whether now for us as a church about to go into a new building, we have got people coming, you know, uh, new folks, and we're seeing life changes. So we're moving forward. Right. When our personal lives, we all have something going right. on that, that can uh, this can apply to too because God has things He wants us to be faithful in doing and serving him in his kingdom sure and that's going forward but if we if we do that without god right man we're getting in all kinds of trouble absolutely so so a few people brought some questions yeah so the first question we have is why do you think some people go without god we know we're not supposed to but why do you think some people still go without god you know well we i, I you know we kind of touched on it, i think a little bit see what you think too I think a lot of it, we get frustrated. Sure. You know, we're relying on our own strength. I, th I think one of the most dangerous things I know I've experienced over the last year in my life, if, we, if we're not careful, we get tired. Sure. Sure. But if we, do, and then if we get to that point, if we haven't built in the right, you know, check marks and mm -hmm. what to try to get the proper rest, and I don't just mean physically, but that's also spiritually right. and emotionally. And if we don't do that, well, then you get sloppy. Right. When you whatever causes the tired again it's explanation not excuse right you know whatever causes that tired you get sloppy and then you just just you get frustrated and you just want to go on right i think that's one reason yeah I, well, for me i know one of the ones is you get impatient yeah you want something uh, this arbitrary timeline that i've set out right this is what i want at this time well that my timing is not perfect god's timing is perfect right and so i think part of it is we try to go without god because i need this to be done now this is the right. time it has to happen yeah so we become yeah. impatient about that and then yeah. we fall on our face sure yeah and, and another i think we see so often uh, a reason that that some people go without God, just to be bluntly honest, is arrogance. Oh, uh, well, yes, completely. We, we, you know, because we get, you know, we get this complex of thinking, oh, I don't need any help. Right. You know, I mean, I, I don't need. Basically, we're saying I don't need God. Well, we, that's so. just stems from a pride issue in our heart. Yeah. Where I, I'm still in charge. I'm still. And right. It's not submission. Right. And it's not obedience. Yeah. We need to submit and be obedient. Yeah. And I think part of that falls into that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's tied up. So. Yeah. Our next question is, okay. uh, how do we not ignore the signs of God's presence in our lives? Like, how do we not ignore it? We we can see it, but how right. do we not ignore it? We, I think we have to be intentional. Okay. Don't we? You know, because 
so many things these days more than ever it seems are vying for our attention oh more yes it seems like just there's constant bombardment yeah, yeah. I, I think you remember that game and I, and I know it still exists remember that game whack-a-mole yeah you know where you have this little thing and you hit in the head of a mole yeah. right and the goal is to eventually get them all to go down and some speed with the thing right right but it seems like anytime you hit one at least one other pops up sometimes two or three right and I think that's that's what we have in the distractions a lot. Absolutely. Or let's say we squash one. One right. other two or three pop up. Absolutely. And you, I think we need to get to the point where we focus and make a priority list of what really is important. Right. And I think that's when we would become more aware. Right. Because we're really starting to take things right in, yeah. in, in the proper perspective. No, you're right. And we get an idea, okay, I can see now God right. moving. Well, I like the whack-a-mole. Uh, but what I think of it, I think it was like spinning plates. Mm, where yeah. I have another plate that I'm trying to spin to keep this person happy, to get this done, to do this and that. And now all my attention is all these other things. Right. And from the outward, it doesn't look like they're bad things, but they're not God things. Right. And so I feel like all my energy is for is busy, but it's not directed on you know to God. Sure. And sometimes and, you get yeah. that. Yeah. And, and we say in staff team all the time, right? We need to learn to say no to the good so we can say yes to the absolutely. best. And yeah. I think that's an example of that. I agree with that completely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our next question is, okay. what are some of the reasons or excuses people give for going without him, going without God? Oh, wow. I mean, the list could go on on that yeah. too, right? But uh, it, yeah, so we touched on some of the some of its arrogance, but I mean, some of it, it sounds arrogant, but you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I just need to get this done real quick. Right. You know, or I really want that, you know, yeah. the impatience thing, right? So I'm, I'm going to go this or... Or, you know, my friends won't, and fill in the blank, you know, maybe right. do this or do that, or my family or whatever, right. and uh, or it just looks right. Right. I mean, one for me, to be honest, is the fact like, well, this is a small thing. Yeah. I can just handle the small thing by myself. It's not a big thing. I don't need God for this one. It's right. not this giant thing. This is a small, tiny thing. Sure. Well, God still wants that small, tiny thing. Yeah. And Zach can still really, really mess up that small, tiny thing yeah. pretty big. Yeah. And so I think part of it is that, like, well, this I don't need to bother him with that. Yeah. He wants all of it. Yeah, because what's that old saying? He is either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Exactly. And, and what may seem in our mind to be small, God's still interested in that. Absolutely. Because remember what the scripture says, he knows the number of hairs on most of our heads. And then also the, the oh, really, he knows, you know, the the number of hair on our head and, right. and, and he's, he cares about the sparrow that they Absolutely. fall and, you know, those kind of things. And, and you know, we, we just take that for granted. Oh, completely. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> yeah. You and I can sit here and share stories about that, but yeah, sure. it's 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 accurate though, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Our final yeah. question we have today is: Can any good come out of us wandering in the wilderness? Well, we touched on it earlier. Yeah. You know, when we're going through the summer, I think so. Right. Uh, again, not that we'd want to, right? Right. But you and I have shared stories together, just right. with us. You know, things that we have learn and i know if if anyone can stop and think hopefully they, they could think of something right man that was a tough time in my life i wish i hadn't have done that but i know now right that i'm not going to do that again well and god uses some of those times in the wilderness kind of as our burning bush to like get our attention right get us back on track get us back to being faithful right to <clears throat> back to being obedient right i mean god is is very very loving in that way right he shows us that grace that even that we have strayed you know, sometimes we're kind of like, we're like Jonah. We're like, is this, are we going Nineveh or Tarshish here? Right. And we have that, that choice. Well, just because we take the wrong choice doesn't mean that God's not going to teach us or show us something. Sure. Yeah. He still does. Yeah, it absolutely. just might not be as easy and as smooth as it should be. Right. But, I mean, we, we lack obedience sometimes. Yeah. We lack faith sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, if nothing else, if, if we respond correctly in the wilderness, we can grow in obedience. Right. And our faith will grow. Right. And, you know, then it won't be, uh, you know, the definition of insanity, repeating the same thing over again, expecting right. different results. We grow as a result. Right. So it, it, it's, uh, it's, again, not something we'd want to go through, but it can be productive. No, and that's what we, we said earlier about discipleship. That's kind of discipleship, too, is you wandered in the wilderness, and now you're in a good spot. Well, now you can come, along, come alongside somebody else. And be like, you know what? I've been there. Right. Let you know, let me show you. Let me keep you accountable. Yeah. Let me help you with this because I've been in your shoes before. Yeah. And that's absolutely. discipleship, right? Yeah. Is yeah. to be with somebody walking alongside them. Sure. You know, at Village Meadows, we have small groups. And we always talk about doing life together. Right. Well, that's part of it is to be like, you know what? I've kind of been through this. Let me help you out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I love that. That's exactly right. We're yeah. spot on. We do life together. Yeah. Well. Thank you for joining us this week. You know, we, we, we encourage every week, you know, as, as you do, please, as you watch, please like and subscribe to us here on YouTube. 
on our channel. Be sure to click the notification bell so you can you know be alerted every week uh, when we upload a video. Because there's other things we do on right. YouTube, of course. You know? Of course, yeah. And it's it's always growing. So there's you know two or three times a week we do that. Uh, also, uh, the interesting questions: What is it? Social at villagemeadowschurch dot com. Uh, if, if questions for this, or as you watch, uh, you know other right. other uh, live streams, you know, uh, you know, send those questions to us on Facebook. Follow us there. On the, well, we have two or three different platforms, but it's Facebook dot com backslash Village Meadows Church. Yep. Uh, uh, Instagram is what's our Instagram? Is that Village Meadows Church SV? Yeah, so I always Village mix Meadows that up, SV up with yep. my. If, you have, if you're on Instagram, that's the, the way to follow us. Yeah, and yeah. then we're on TikTok as well. That's right. Yeah, so you can go on TikTok on Village Meadows Church S V A Z. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, follow us there as well. Sure, and then of course there, there's our website Village Meadows uh, dot Church. Yeah, and, and you can get links to all that stuff. So again, thank you for for joining us. Uh, let's uh, let's close this episode in prayer. So let's pray. Lord, again, we thank you that. Even when we stray, uh, and there are possibly times that we have to go through the wilderness, God, you're faithful no matter what. And we thank you for that. So Lord, we want to ask that, that you uh, continue to grow us, to use us to, uh, to bring glory and honor to your name, to, to dive into your word even deeper, uh, and to apply it to our lives, and realize that it's the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ that makes a difference. We praise you for your greatness and your glory. And it's all because of you we pray. Amen. Amen.